Hi, my name's Anthony Cummins. Now you may or may not know you've come in the middle of a really good discussion. If this is, you've come in by mistake, please go see my previous video and uh, see Dean and Buffon's response. The argument so far. The argument so far is I have found a 1600s quote, which then has an 1800s image of a straight bladed sword with a square guard. The opposition or the discussion is talking that this is artistic impression, okay, and that it is not a straight sword, the artist just got it wrong and it was a slip of their hand or it was the style they drew in. That, the second argument is that there have been no swords found in Japanese history that are straight bladed at the time period in question. I'd like to say here's a picture, the picture I was using, the full picture, and I've drawn a line, an orange line between the two bottom points of each sword and you can see one is curved, one is straight. Maybe, guys, there are lots of straight bladed, round and square handled swords in this period. Maybe that's the truth. All of us agree that the square tuba exists in history. Straight katana. Here you go again. a direct comparison between straight katana and curved sword. A person from the time, the period, saying straight swords are better. Then you have 200 years later, in still in the samurai period, still when you had Ashigaru, they draw them straight. Now, to me that is 100% true. They have straight swords. But, of course, everybody's asking, where are they in history, Anthony? Where are they? So, what did I do? I went to find the truth. And I found it here. This is Leeds Armoury. This is the Royal Armouries England. It's supported by the Royal Family. It is government approved and their officials are picked and on the government payroll. Okay, they are professionals. I spoke to their headman there, Tom Richardson. I showed him the quotes. I showed him the images and I said, what is going on? So he says, Anthony, this appears in history. It does, but it's not where you think it is. First of all, he said it does appear in the sword history, but not very often, because they were pretty much chopped up. It was chopped down. He said they chopped them up, and what happened was the curve was chopped out of it. So what it was is nearly 99.9% .9 straight. There was a millimetre or two where the original back curve was, but on the whole, put next to a curved sword, it is straight. That is the only issue, that the original one had a slight curve, but the curves are at the end. When you chop the ends off, it becomes straight. But he said even more interesting, Anthony, look at this. This is a spear, yeah, or a lance, if you will, from an Ashigaru. An Ashigaru weapon, right, mainly, um, of lower quality, and he says these were mass-produced, and they were much straighter than Naginata, and then to add to that, I went and found some more research on them. And I looked up this man here. And this is his book. Now, what does his book say? I want you to go to Google Books, everyone. Pause the video, go to Google Books, and type in his book title. Then type in, on the left-hand side, search and type in the name here. But I've done you a still shot off the computer here. Now, can you see, this is a blade used as a naginata. Now, so where are these straight swords in history? They're in the spear section, guys, spears. So we've all been looking in swords, but when these are found in history, they're put straight in the spear section because they were made traditionally as spears. But foot soldiers, Ashigaru, would get them and they would chop the tang down and then according to this gentleman, who you've now seen his biography, they shave the top of the curve off. To make it straight, to alter the curvature. Here. 
Now, as you can see, I've drawn the lines there. This is 99.9% .9 straight. It has a millimetre or two there. You see, they are found in history. The only problem is, is there are not many of them. Why are there not many of them? Because who would keep a chopped up old spear blade as a family heirloom? No one. But what does the gentleman say about when they are found? He says they are the majority of them, or a high percentage, are cut down and chopped up into this straight bladed sword and used as katana. Now we have a 1600s thing saying it's straight katana and we have this naginata used chopped up as a katana and with its curvature chopped off. So it does appear in history guys, it is there. It is just in the wrong section. Most of them are used as katanas. What does that tell you? Most of them are used as katanas by foot soldiers. What does that tell you about the foot soldier who can't afford much? He's chopping up old lance blades to make straight bladed katanas. What does it say? And then we have pictures that have nearly all straight bladed katanas. This means, yeah, this is what the Ashigaru were doing at the time. Right everyone, we're going to move on now quickly to the Hatsumi debate before we round up. Now, Stephen Hayes did not invent the straight bladed ninja sword. To remind everyone, I'd like to show you another quote by Don Rowley. So, somebody who's been with Hatsumi since the beginning didn't recognise what it was, okay? This is Don Rowley's quote, so let's look at this. Stephen Hayes goes to Japan in the late 70s, yep, yeah, mid-late 70s. And he learns about the ninja toe or the straight-bladed sword and he brings it back to America, becomes a revolution across the world on ninjas and iconic. Was it there before Stephen Hayes? Now, remember, Dean has said that uh, it's not. It, Stephen Hayes admits he did it. Now, Stephen Hayes admits he brought it to America. He doesn't admit he made it up. I can prove this now. So let's look at Andrew Adams' book. Andrew Adams' book, 1973. There are a few, there are many photographs in this. There are a couple of an old family. There are some of the Japanese landscape. Some are at the museum. But all of the ninja action shots are done by Togakure. And he's based his work on Togakure. And every action shot in there is Togakure. Now look at this one. is a square tsuba straight bladed sword in Hatsumi's own group in 1973. Add to that here's another picture from Ueno Museum. So in the museum years before Stephen even came with Okusei who we know got things wrong, Nawa we know got things wrong. So in the museum look at this there's the picture of a straight bladed square guarded sword. Here's some pictures of Stephen Hayes in his 1989 book, okay? This is him with a squared super straight blade. Where is it? Look at the background. All the pictures in that book, Ninja Fighting Arts, are taken in Japan. He is a fifth dan in Togakure Ninjutsu, being taught by Masaki Hatsumi. He's using this sword. Who's his teacher? He's in Japan. He's part of the organisation. These photographs are taken in Japan. This is from Hatsumi. Now as well, pictures from Hatsumi's book itself have Stephen Hayes with a square blade. In Hatsumi's book, he has it. Okay, then how about this picture here? Shinobi no Mono. Not a square tuba, but a straight blade. Who was the advisor on that film, historical advisor? Masaki Hatsumi. Straight bladed ninja toe, Masaki Hatsumi. Okay, now how about this then? If 1973 and Shinobi no Mono are good enough because it's not got the blade, how about this magazine? This was published in 1960s. So where is everybody ready? The 1960s, no Westerners were there. Stephen Hayes had never even dreamed of going to Japan. It's only Japanese. And here is a picture. Now, who drew this magazine? It must have been an artist under the guidance of Masaki Hatsumi. You've got Shuko. They are only from Togakure. Who knows where they're from? 
Masaki Atsumi must have told the artist what these looked like because they were not famous at this point. The devil mask blowing things, that is Togakure. Masaki Atsumi must have told it. Can you see the chain weapon? Togakure. Masaki Atsumi will have explained this. Can you see it says Togakure there with Kana at the side. What do you find on the left hand side? In 1960 you find a straight bladed, square guarded sword. The ninja toe on a classic style comic book ninja. In the third picture you find it there. This means guys, can you see this is from Ninja Attack the Book page 26. Please go and look at it. This means that Hatsumi, Masaki Hatsumi, the head of the Togakure, was actually the person who gave this information, or it was Hatsumi's students, to the artist who put it in a national magazine, who, a magazine that's very famous, and this is the first time I can find the ninja sword in history like this. It's Masaki Hatsumi. Please predate this because we need to bridge this gap. But at the moment, Masaki Hatsumi has lied, or Don Rowley has lied, but someone has lied because 1960, way before Stephen A's even dreamed of black clad ninjas or the world had ever seen them. So Don, I'd like to ask you the question, Don, are you lying about Masaki Hatsumi or is Masaki Hatsumi lying because history says he brought the square bladed sword to the world, not Stephen Hayes, Stephen Hayes brought it through Hatsumi, the first historical reference to this ninja toe is Masaki Hatsumi. Please predate this and explain why Masaki Hatsumi or yourself have lied. Okay guys, I'd like to round up quickly. Now we've got the 1600s quote, straight swords are better than curved swords. We've got 1800s, same document, straight swords. We have got then, um, uh, we have then got a recognized museum saying they exist with a slight, slight miniature curvature because of their original formation as spears moved into swords most of them were changed into swords a high percentage but then thrown away and that's why they're not in the historical record you then have a japanese acclaimed sword polisher who then shows you how this is done and tells you 100 percent they were made as straight swords he says we cut the curvature off so they're straight swords in japan by japanese people masaki hatsume in 1960 then quotes these swords as being used guys we have got one thing to work out here, one thing only, the leap. So guys, let's think about it. We've got square tubers, we've got short, straight bladed swords. We've got images of them put together. We've got references of them using them. We've got one question, guys. How did this provable historic sword become the ninja toe? How? The first person in historical records is Masaki Hatsumi to mention this. Please, please find an earlier date. We are missing about 80 years. Somewhere along the line, it becomes ninja. That is the end of my historical facts. Now I'm going to theorise for you. All right? We know Ninpei, shinobi soldiers, foot soldiers, Ashigaru, yeah? Same thing. Well, same class. Now, we know that a high percentage of the ninja were from Ashigaru class. So, we've got Ashigaru doing ninjutsu. You've got a straight bladed sword appearing in history. You've got a square tsuba, yeah? Appears in history. You've got a sword that is chopped up from a spear. Used as a tool. Nobody cares about it. Maybe a ninja did use this, guys. Just a theory. Buffon, 100%. I am not saying it's a ninja sword. Please listen. 1,000 million percent, it is not a ninja sword. However, it's there. So guys, can we make the connection? Can we find out why Don or Hatsumi is lying? And can we now say this sword does exist? All the proof is there for you to see. Thanks for listening guys. Hope you enjoyed that. Dean, thank you for your polite video. It was actually very polite. Why can't we all band together as one group guys? You see me and Dean on different sides of the fence but we're still putting things forward and we're still communicating. That's the point of the historical ninjutsu research team. We're here to find the truth. Finding the straight sword has gone against my original idea. It goes against my research. But I'm after the truth and I'm willing to put it there. So I hope you can all follow. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Would you believe it, guys? Spears as swords. No wonder we couldn't find it. Spears. Enjoy it and enjoy the spear search. I did.